always had this picture in my head of the best ways to get into game development, and never in my life has that ever included JavaScript. So it wasn't until recently that I realized making a game in JavaScript could be a bridge. Maybe the bridge between game development and web development. Two very different but large areas of software, and that to me makes it interesting. A lot of people want to make games, it's really valuable to know how to make a website and use front-end frameworks. It seems like it should be a good mix. You just gotta pay the toll, which is using JavaScript. And as someone who uses JavaScript all the time, no one wants to use JavaScript. So I'm gonna find out if this theory has any legs to it. And to do so, I'm gonna use the popular game library, Phaser. When setting it up, you'll get options to use these front-end frameworks like React, Vue, Solid. If you don't know what these are, you're already learning. These are front-end web dev frameworks. Now, I didn't know which one to choose. So I thought it'd be fun to do a little bit of gambling and spin the wheel. Wheel, 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 wheel. wheel. Oh great, I got plain vanilla JavaScript. Ah, that's awesome. I don't even get to use TypeScript. That sucks. So I read through the documentation and set up this basic project, which you can now build and boot up. And this might surprise you that it will open and run your game in the browser. And check it out. We got a cornflower blue window, the greatest color of video games. So normally when I'm learning like a new framework or something, I usually try and just get a player moving around, but this time it was a little different. I was reading through the documentation to get a sense of how things are, like what's even available to me when I noticed this physics tab. And this just listed some libraries you can use like Matter.js. And then reading the Matter.js documentation, I saw something about constraints, which is like taking two physics objects and bolting them together. And that gave me an idea. I made a box, I made two rectangles, bolted everything together with constraints, and now we have something that looks like the squid from Minecraft. And look, he's trying to fight gravity, but he can't. So to help him out, I wanted to add input to help balance out these rectangles. I guess I'll call them legs. And after some trial and error made it, so when you press a button, the leg will actually move towards the mouse, which lets you control one of them at a time. And this was really easy to implement. I just followed the documentation and, oh no. After fixing uh, whatever that was, I added a change where one leg you can move around with the mouse and the other one gets anchored into the ground. And with this, you can kind of roll over yourself and start moving around the level. And at this point, it became obvious what the game is going to be. The legs can touch the ground, but if your body ever collides with the ground, well, in that case, you're going to lose. And I'll tell you what, making this game, that happened to me way too often. But if we have a lose condition, then you got to have a win condition, right? So I coded up just like a level of random platforms and the idea would be you'd have to walk through the level and like reach a goal and that's how you win. Pretty simple. The problem is, and this was really annoying, you'll see that every time I actually move past this first platform, I just like was physically could not move over anymore. For some reason, it just was not happening. Like I could not get past this point. So my immediate reaction to this was, I suck. I must have just implemented things wrong. So from scratch, re-implemented all the movement and physics three separate times using different types of components like springs, changed the gravity settings. Three full times I rewrote it. Turns out it had nothing to do with that. When the game starts, the camera actually made a bounds on the edges. So even though I physically can't see the bounds and the camera's moving and following the player, there is still an invisible bounds box blocking us from literally moving to the right. So obviously I just need to remove that. And man, what a good way to spend an afternoon. Can't wait to look back fondly on this. But hey, now you can move over to the right. And now that you can walk to the end, I added a goal that you can touch and you'll get a you win screen, giving us the bare bones of a functional game. You can win, you can lose. And with that in place, it's time to get a little bit more creative. Originally, I thought this guy looked like somebody on stilts, but it kind of looks more like arms to me, like he's holding Holding something. And also I was hungry at the time I was doing this, but in that moment I made a sushi character and the rectangles are actually chopsticks that he's holding. So after drawing that up in Inkscape and importing it, we now have our sushi guy with chopstick arms walking around the level. I like it. He kind of looks like a little sassy. And now that we have the player sprites in, I did some other polish like adding some colors to when you are attached to the ground and when you're not, so it's easier to tell what's going on. Coded up a level that's longer and a bit more challenging, you actually gotta make some long jumps in this one. Then just after playtesting, fixed a bunch of bugs and issues I encountered. The goal here was to make something pretty simple and quick though. Is this something I could see you making a full-fledged game in? I don't know, I'm sure some people say that they can. That's not where I see the value. Back in the day we had flash games and they still exist and 
you don't have to use JavaScript to do this. Most of these games look like they were made in an afternoon and then you throw it up on a website for people to play. And you know, that's kind of like the fun of it. You get something out quickly and people can play it and you can share it with your friends. And ultimately, like I was saying in the beginning of the video, this is just a great stepping stone to get into game development or web development. And it's more for like rapidly building tiny games. At least at this point, that's where I think you're gonna get the most value through doing this. And it's a great way to learn JavaScript. And because it's built with the web in mind, in theory, you should be able to package a game up and deploy it on some website really easily. That's what I do with all my games and never in the past has that caused me severe suffering or anything of that nature. It always just works perfectly on the first try. So surely it's gonna be the same experience with this. I mean, it runs in the browser. So all you should have to do is build the project and then that creates this distribution folder which you can go in and zip up all the contents, go to itch.io, upload the zip you just made, and then it should work, right? Oh my god, it actually worked on the first try. That never happens, I can't believe it. As always, link in the description if you want to play it. And while this is like a really small, simple game, like incredibly small, I'm kind of a fan of this. I think I'd like to see more people try it and see what they think. But JavaScript's already like one of the most popular languages in the world. So I don't know, I just see this as a good approach for a lot of people that are kind of shy about getting into game development or whatever. And I think my theory has legs. So that's it for this one. Go ahead and watch this video because YouTube thinks you're gonna like it. Let me know what other tools you want me to check out. And why not go spend an afternoon and try making a game in JavaScript. But first go subscribe.